DC isolators. Are they dangerous? Are they a problem? Should we fit them or should we forget about them altogether? Let's explore that idea. So one of the ways we need to make sure our DC isolators or any termination with an electrical wiring system is robust and secure is to terminate it correctly. And with our fine stranded DC cables here, we need to do that with a couple of different methods for each end. So with the isolator, it's a ferruled end. We'll have a look at that now. So you could use a, a booted ferrule or just a, an insulated one as I've got here. It depends on what you're terminating into to a large degree. Um, but with these IMO isolators and the cage clamp that's in them, I find it's better with the uninsulated variants, but um, each to their own with that one. And then you need an appropriate tool for crimping that down. And we found some of the um, our budget sets that you can get off Amazon don't give as a reliable crimp as um, these ones. So these are from Weir and I bought them, not been gifted or anything. And it's just a way of ensuring that the actual ferruled end is made off nice and securely. And you've got a good quality crimp on the end there. And I always try and do this away from the isolator. It just makes it a little bit easier to work and, and see. Maybe that's me being old and blind. And also with the uninsulated variants of these, you do just need to take a bit off the end so you don't have too much exposed uh, conductor sticking out the top of the terminal. So I always strip them back to that sort of length. And then we've got our positive and our negative, and we need to slide that, slide that in appropriately to our stuffing gland and make sure we get the outer body through and into the isolator. So I don't know if you can see that there. So the outer body coming into the isolator itself, and that's just allowing us to make sure we get a weather seal on this. Now this is top entry because we're in an indoor environment. If you were outdoors, you would want to be utilizing bottom entry only. I've selected top entry on this one just because it's going to be a bit neater for the cable run because we're not using containment and we're uh, in this little training environment here. So we can start with the isolator end again, and I always prefer to use croppers on stripping these cables. You should really use a stripping tool because you don't want to be catching any of the fine stranded conductors on the inner of the cable. However, from that many of these over 25 years of making terminations off, I'm quite happy to know that I'm not going to do that. But if you're a bit fresher into your time and not quite sure on how your sharpness of your tools are, if you've got a new set or something, you might want to think about using the wire strippers. And then it's the same process for the other side of the isolator. We have our fine stranded cable, so we need to make sure it's ferruled and we're capturing all of the strands in that ferrule body. We don't want any of them splaying out. And then we know we're going to have a nice, reliable electrical connection inside that termination on the cage clamp within the DC isolator. And that is how we ensure we're not going to have any hot spots, high resistance points, basically, within your wiring system. And we don't want those on the AC or the DC side. Uh, that is one of the things we're trying to avoid as electricians. That's my fly lead now, sort of made up. We can pop that into the bottom of the stuffing gland. Again, bring the body of the cable into the uh, isolator and make sure that we've got um, the, the gland compressing down onto the outer body of that isolator as well, um, cable as well, because we don't want any moisture ingress. And then we can tighten down our cage clamp onto the conductor, making sure we're getting an adequate connection. And with these, I always nip them up to make sure we've got um, the connection formed, but then leave them for a while just to settle. I've said this on a few of my YouTube videos. So apologies to those of you who've heard this all before, but it really is just to take account for any settlement in the metals or the fine strands. I mean, there shouldn't really be an awful lot of that with a ferruled connection, but better to check than assume so I would always suggest making it off, nipping it up to what you know is rough sort of tightness. You get a feel for these things as electricians, whether we believe in a top calibrated arm or not. You do know roughly where that tightness sits and then you can uh, just go back over it with your torque wrench at the end, make sure you kind of verified that tightness and you're happy 
in five minutes time or so that that is a robust uh, connection. Now the opposing end of that is the MC4 connectors themselves and with these you need to make sure your ends are flaring square and flush and again I've shared countless videos on this already so apologies I'm not going to go through an MC4 making off procedure but you want to take a little bit of the insulation off at the end of your conductors and that allows you then to utilize the connectors that come with the inverter that you're terminating into they must be the ones that are supplied with it and that you get the right ends on and then you can make that connection into the actual inverter itself as I'm going to do here so using again the appropriate crimping tool and this time I'm selecting the Mipex tool and this has the added benefit of holding our connector in position and these are six mil conductors so we need to make sure we're using the six mil uh, put it in the right way that helps doesn't it the six mil uh, clamp get that into position he says and then we pop our cable in to the body of the back of the clamp squeeze all the way down and drop that out and you need to give it an inspection then you want to make sure that your strands are in the actual back of the cable and that the pin is flush against the uh, insulation on the cable as well if you've got all those things in place and you remember where you put the outer part you then simply pop it in make sure it clicks and then torque up the back body on the connector i'm just going to loose twist this one for now because we're in this little training environment but you get the idea and then with the opposing pin on the negative side in this case again put your mated connector onto the cable now the reason i don't think these are a suitable form of isolation for us as electricians is pretty straightforward to be honest and that is the only way for them not to be carrying power so electrical energy current and voltage without an isolator is that it has to be dark that's the only real way unless you're lucky enough to have optimizers in there that would do a rapid shutdown of sorts on AC removal and that that's a problem not when the systems are brand new so I would be quite happy having known I've made these connectors off and put them into the inverter that if I want to remove them and carry out some testing or do some maintenance or whatever fresh out of the box newly made off connectors using the right tools to take them out the inverter that that would be okay the problem arises when these have been in use for several years and it could be that they've been in an outdoor environment um, and it might be that they've had UV damage the cycling of the weather Ferner and fauna and the connectors and the plugs are not in the same condition as they were fresh out of the box and you'll see here as I pop them in on this inverter they tend to on most manufacturers kit live very close to each other so they're in close proximity to each other within this little space in fact I'll bring you in closer so you can have a look at that yourselves you can see in there so they're very close I'll bring my other camera in as well because I'm recording this in both portrait and landscape at the same time but if you were to go into this with your tool trying to remove those it isn't impossible to imagine where you may dislodge both the positive and negative at the same time especially if they have maybe not been made off correctly in the beginning so remember this is an act of maintenance most likely it might not be you as the person going to do it who's made those connections off so yeah if this is an act of maintenance it might not be you as the original installer here you don't know the capability and competency of the person who made off those connectors and if these are maybe sat up to 600 volts on a typical domestic system at times and up to a thousand volts or more in your commercial world of kit and your form of isolation is on the end of that plug i wouldn't call that a safe system of work in fact I would like to see the risk assessment from anybody who considers that to be so these isolators have never ever been the problem they're perfectly safe in what they are much like an ac connector and isolator the issue has been in the capability of people wiring these things and sometimes not taking consideration of the external influences so using top end through when they're in outdoor environments um, using the fixing holes through the back of the isolators where moisture can ingress in an outdoor environment and all of those kind of things um, lead to problems with the equipment and it could be that ferrules haven't been used at the outset either and just the fine stranded cables straight into the cage clamp there with no talking of the terminals and maybe no strain relief on there either and certainly in earlier times 
DC isolators that maybe weren't DC isolators at all. So we have all of those things and factors playing out there in industry. And some of the data that's come back, I think it was insurers that have done a lot of this research, was showing that DC isolators and the MC4 connectors were the biggest points of failure within a DC wiring system. And that is hardly surprising when we consider all of those factors. But the problem never was the kit. The problem was the way it was installed. We need to solve that issue, not push it further away. Because all that happens is if we take these DC isolators away, that problem moves somewhere else into the installation moves to the MC4 connectors perhaps. Um, we aren't solving the problem, we are simply shuffling it somewhere else. So I think we need to get a little bit real around that. Um, and with the DC isolators themselves, they perform a vital function for us as electricians, a really, really important one. And we see a lot of talk at the moment around safe isolation and working safely out on site. And rightly so, it is such an important thing. And with DC, when we don't really have any over current protective devices in any of these circuits generally, you know, it's straight out the solar panels, straight into the inverters. And if we are on the end of that, if something has gone wrong as somebody removes an MC4 connector from an inverter to carry out maintenance and something horrible happens, have we set things up in a way that enables people to go to work safely? And I would urge great caution towards anybody who is installing their kit in this way and those who are encouraging people to install kit in this way because it is safer to really think hard on that. That kind of advice and messaging could lead to a situation in the future that puts another person, electrician, in danger. Having that point of isolation allows for the electrical energy to be disconnected before anybody is interacting with plugs and connectors. If we're then going inside the isolator to carry out tests, we can probe onto terminals, we can observe and see the voltages, we have a visual indicator in front of our eyes if there's been any signs of overheating. And we can make an informed decision under a controlled, risk-based approach to the work activity in what we are doing. On larger arrays, that can become problematic just due to the scale and number of strings and then the argument around human error and the number of isolators does play a part in things. There's no point pretending otherwise, but they still, again, perform the same function. They allow a place for the system to be interrupted safely, to be locked off if required, and to allow maintenance and testing. So the other big buzzword of industry at the moment is around that maintenance and testing, something that, if we're all honest, has been neglected in lots of places through years and years and years, and lots of these systems are installed and then never receive maintenance, which again can play out in the figures around some of these isolators and MC4s failing because they haven't had an inspection at one, two, three, five, ten 10 years. They've just been left there doing their thing with all the fauna and fauna, weather, high, high use. Generally, they're put under a fair degree of strain due to the kind of voltages and currents that are floating through them over a long duration. And if we're skipping that part out, what else should we really expect other than equipment to fail and go wrong? So that maintenance piece is so important. And again, having a point within the system to interact with to carry out that maintenance, again, allows us as electricians to do that safely. So these for me aren't just an optional thing. They're not something that we should be dissuading people from fitting because it isn't safe. These are things that we need to ensure we are putting in the fixed wiring system. So isolation points should be within the fixed wiring, not within equipment. Because we see that argument as well that if the inverter has a DC isolator built into it, you can make that disconnection on the inverter, but that doesn't take the voltage and power away from the strings. And also, if there is an issue with said piece of equipment, it could be that there has been an overheating event and perhaps the MC4s are melting. How are you thus then going to make that isolation or interrupt the power to that equipment to try and bring it to a safe state? And that is where the kind of consumer side of this and operator of a building side of it comes in, that it might be them coming to interact with this kit when it is in a fault state or something has gone wrong. And they need visible local points of isolation to be able to say, you know what, I'm going to turn all this off, everything I can within sight and get the electrician out there. And that could be the difference between a piece of kit going up in flames and not sometimes. So I do think we really need to think carefully on this for safety reasons, for us as electricians to allow safe maintenance, isolation, uh, to, to enable a risk-based approach to a work activity. And then also considering the day-to-day -day operation of these systems and how consumers might interact with them when they do enter fault states, 
or if they're having maintenance carried out on the solar panels, for example, that they can, if they want, have a disconnected state between the kit and the external array. And for me, that should be done with isolation points in the fixed wiring, not within a component part of the products and equipment. It's pretty clear cut. And I've tried to present that a few times over the last couple of years now, because this seems to, seem, seems to keep raising its head. And I don't say this as a point of preaching or to try and appear to be correct over a point of debate. I'm saying this to try and help other electricians not fall into something I see as a trap in the future that may bring you problems in your business, um, contractually, and perhaps worse if something horrible was to happen. So that is why I'm making and sharing this content. No other reason. And I did the same around outdoor consumer units. Um, and there was a pile on instigated around a certain manufacturer that makes a lot of those products. Um, and I now know where that came from, which has really blown my mind. However, it was never done to argue and be in those kind of cesspits. It was to try and share the little that I know and problems that might be encountered for electricians in the future when they've installed a few of those and they have a catalogue of those that then start going wrong or potentially been an issue and where that might sit for them. And as it proved with the advice and guidance now coming from the industry of things, I'd say that was a sensible approach and a sensible message to share. And I think this is the same. So I hope you found that useful. So there we go, fit your DC isolators. They form a vital part in any wiring system, allowing safe systems of work for us as electricians and a point of isolation for consumers. And they represent no danger whatsoever when they're made off correctly, much like electricians have been doing for decades and more with AC isolators as well. And I don't hear anyone screaming out to remove the AC rotary isolators that occasionally burn out or shower pull cord isolators, overcurrent protective devices, main switches. Where does it end? Do we end up with a single cable from a main bus bar chamber leading out to the kettle in the kitchen? This is exactly the same sort of thing for me and we need to do a lot better.